Uh, this is going to be a video that talks about what you do when you have disc related back pain. So this is something that you are going to have pain with rounding your back, uh, bending forward, sitting for prolonged periods, especially when you go to get up from sitting. So I'm actually dealing with some myself right now. And my pain right now is kind of here in my back. And as soon as I start to round my back, I'd say like right there, it goes to here and I feel it kind of down the back of my hamstring. And if I do it enough, I'll get some tingling and I'll get some stuff in my calf. So for me, it's important with this to know that you have a position that you can retest to see how you feel as you do some of these different things. You want to know that what you're doing is helpful and not harmful. So one position for me is actually in standing. Whenever I bend forward, if I round my back, as soon as I do that, even just taking my head down, it hurts. But if I keep a flatter back and I hinge more from my hips, I'll take my hands behind my back and I'll kind of pinch my elbows to lock my back into place. And I'll soften my knees so there's not as much tension on the nerve. If I do this, it's still a little painful, but it's not as painful because I'm keeping my back more flat. Like that hurts, that hurts pretty bad. And as I come down, yep, I feel that kind of go here, but it's not near as bad as if I start by rounding. So I'll use this for me as a position that I'm gonna retest if what I'm doing is helpful. So safest thing to do for me is I lie on my back because my back's completely supported and I can lightly tug and move the nerve without a lot of stress on it. So I'll bring, this is my problematic leg, I'm gonna leave my toe pointed to start because there's less tension on the nerve. And I'm gonna gently come up and that hurts, and that hurts. Right to that point, every time I do it, I feel a little something and then it goes away. I tell people like a light switch, it's there and it's gone. There's no buildup of symptoms. For me, it feels a little better if my head's not up because my head being up puts me in more flexion. And now from there, I'll do it with a flexed ankle, which puts a little bit more tension on my leg. And right there, I feel it. Now this is my first safe position that I can lightly move that nerve and not put a lot of pressure on my back because I'm lying flat. Now the other one that I like is I'll come up to where I start to feel that pain and I'll start doing little pulses of my ankle. And actually this one, I find that the more I do it, you'll see I can get my legs straighter with less pain. So this one really seems to help, at least in my current situation, right? So you wanna pay attention to that. Like right now, my pain in my leg is pretty much gone and I just feel like I'm stretching my calf. So for me, that is something that I'm noticing improvement in, so I would keep doing it right now. Everybody's pain is a little bit different. So with disc-related pain or nerve-related pain, I don't wanna do anything that really makes that nerve sensitive. So if you're up here and you're trying to do this and it really hurts in your leg, the advice I'm gonna give you is, you probably need to do more of this knee pulse and going in and out. Now, after I did that pulsing of my ankle, I come back to this kicking motion, it doesn't hurt at all anymore. So just me doing that has reduced some sensitivity around that nerve and it feels a little better. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side because a lot of people will have what's called a positive contralateral straight leg raise. Like even though my symptoms are on this side, when I raise this leg, and even I, yep, right there, when I raise this leg, I feel it on this side. So some people will even have pain lifting the opposite leg. So I'll do the same thing over here. I'm gonna go toe down first, and I feel the pain in my opposite butt cheek when I do that. I would do 10 to 15, and then I do it with a flexed ankle. And that's usually a little tighter, but actually, it's getting a little better now the more I do it. But I do feel it each time at the top, not in this leg, in my right hip slash butt. And then I'll come up and I'll do the pumping of the ankle and be honest with you. This one in my current state feels the best actually. So like right now, I feel very little to nothing in the back of my other leg. Now sometimes it makes a difference. Like if I have this knee bent, that feels a lot easier. I feel absolutely nothing now in my right leg versus here, I feel a little bit. Now, like I said, it's okay to feel a little bit as long as what you feel doesn't feel like it's making it worse. And after each thing that I do, I'm gonna do a little bit of something to retest, right? So for this, this got a little better as, as I did it. I feel more like normal calf and ankle stuff, not really any pain in my leg. And then afterwards, I'm gonna stand. And I may come back to standing to see how I feel in general. And then for me, because I know rounding my back just isn't good, I'm gonna do it in this position. So I'm gonna have my hands against the back of my hips. I pull my elbows back, I soften my knees. As I come down here, for me, this is my position to retest. And it feels a lot better. I feel very little pain, if any, really. Almost nothing. I mean, I feel a little difference in my right leg, like it's not the same as my left, 
But in doing what I just did lying down, absolutely did not make me worse, definitely made me considerably better. So you wanna make sure that each thing that you do, you know how your body reacts to it. Because everybody's disc pain is a little different, right? So it's not everybody should do the same stuff, but that position on your back is usually a pretty tried and true, doesn't hurt it, and usually feels better afterwards as long as you don't stretch it too hard. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you is typically a flexion hurts me. The position I wanna to start to work into is extension. And the safer way to do it is once again in a position where I'm not weight bearing, but in a non weight bearing laying down position. So I'm gonna go on my stomach. And as I lay down, okay, a couple things. One is gonna be I try to see how I feel just laying flat. Now, for my back pain, when I come up into extension, this feels okay. This doesn't really hurt me at all. But at the same time, if you look at my lower back, my back is just passively sagging into extension. So I feel like a little pressure in the lowest part of my back. Um, it doesn't really hurt, it doesn't hurt into my leg. Now I've found that, that I get more out of this. If instead of me just passively doing it, if you look at my back real closely, I'm gonna pull my lower abdomen in a little bit. I tell people like I'm trying to create a little tunnel or a little hollow space between my belly and the table. So if you look closely, it's like uh, I'm very lightly pulling in my lower abdomen. So basically I'm still coming up into extension, right? And you'll see, I'll show you the two differences. So here, I have a little bit of tension in my lower abs versus, watch this, I'm gonna let it go, ready? So I let it go and I just passively collapse. Now I feel a little pressure in my back, it's more uncomfortable. As soon as I do this, which is not a big change, it feels a lot more comfortable because I'm not just passively collapsing into my spine. I have a little bit of muscle control there, which for me feels better as opposed to just letting my spine collapse on itself. So I start off in this prop on the elbows position. And if it's really sensitive, I may start off with just five seconds and then come back down. I always try and do that precursor of a little bit of lower ab control as I come into that elbow prop. Eventually working my way into more of a press up. So I'll start with my arms out in front, but same thing, tension in the stomach. I'll work my way back into arms being closer. So I just want you to see, I'm still extending my spine quite a bit. This is with a little bit of control in my stomach. This is with me just collapsing into my spine. Right here I go. That's more collapsed and that's more uncomfortable for me. A little bit of me pulling my stomach in, I feel like is more beneficial. And for me, I'm not gonna hold that super long. I'm gonna come up and maybe pause for a couple seconds and then come back down. A lot of times I'll just do like five to 10 of these. I'll go on my back and I'll do those kicks again. And I'll do that a couple times back and forth. And then afterwards, once again, I'll come up because I don't want to do a lot of rounding on my back anyways. I'll do hands around the back of my hips, elbows back, soft knees, and same thing I'll reassess. Still feels pretty good. Maybe even better than the last time. So important parts, you gotta reassess, you gotta know if it helped if it helped or not. Those are two initial good sequences to go through for disc related back pain.